That was our guest, Amy, who wrote into the show about an extreme needle phobia that has severely and negatively affected her life. Hoping to help her kick this habit for good and this fear for good, we sent her to psychotherapist, Dr. Mike Dow. Growing up, I imagined that needing to be hospitalized, that must have been a really traumatic experience for you. I mean, I was terrified because I was just a little girl at the time. You know, when you have an experience like that, the amygdala, this part of the brain that sort of pairs fear with something like needles, it, it, it can really link those up in the brain and then it becomes something that you're afraid of. I know that you have a history of fainting, so I wanted to have an EMT here. So we have Gordon here, just in case, so that you won't hurt yourself if you do lose consciousness. A needle phobia is a really interesting phobia because what happens is the heart rate will rise when you see that needle, but then your heart rate actually goes down. So the applied tension technique is a way for you to really make sure that your sympathetic nervous system is going to stay up to prevent you from passing out. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna tense your arms, your legs, your torso, all of these muscles for 10 to 15 seconds. What that's gonna do is, when your heart rate is wanting to crash, it's gonna bring your heart rate back up. I'm gonna begin by showing you a photo of a needle. Are you ready? Tense, one, two, three, and release. Good, what did you notice? The, my ears didn't pop. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see the black. So now I want to go to the next step, which is to show you a video of injection. Mm. Squeeze, arms, legs, feet go up, good and relax. What did you notice? I didn't black out. Wow. <laughs> yeah. is, is that surprising? Yeah. I've never been able to do that. That was a first for you. Yeah. That's the first time I've seen it. All right. Yeah. That's good. That's the first. This is the closest it's ever been. All right. Let me give you a hug. Amy and Dr. Dow are both here. Also joining us, Amy's husband, David, is in the audience. And in watching that video, I can tell that you have a lot of fears for your wife. I certainly do. Um, Seeing her every day being stressed and anxious and uh, not knowing if she's sick or, uh, or if we had an accident and had an injury, she can't go to the hospital and get blood work or take an IV. It's not an option for her. So when you go to the doctor, what is your interaction like there? Are they understanding or do they try to brush you off and say, oh, just get over it? Um, most of the doctors I've had, I've had my family doctor since I was 12. Um, and then we have like an urgent care doctor I've had um, a while. They all understand. Okay, um, but just like the last episode I had, I had a kidney stone and we weren't sure what it was. Um, but we actually went there. They tried to take blood. I wouldn't let them and they refused me care. They sent me straight out the door and I was in, I mean, horrible pain and they wouldn't even check. They wouldn't do an x-ray to even make sure that's what it was, nothing. They just sent me to the door. Because the last time you had blood work done, you paid an anesthesiologist $1,200. Right. Right? To put me to sleep. To yep. put you to sleep for blood work. Mm -hmm. And it showed that you were borderline diabetic. Mm -hmm. right? And you haven't had any blood work done since then to follow up on that. Right. And anemic, right? Yeah, and anemic.